So by now we know how to find the name of the key that we're in based on the key signature. We know how to find all the notes in that scale once we know the name of it. And we know how to build some chords using it. Seven of them, actually. Uh, and then actually, no, more than seven because we know how to build the seven chords that are in the diatonic chord progression. And then we can build seven more that are sevenths. And then I guess that's it for now, but we're gonna learn how to do some more later in this class. So let's start with uh, something relatively simple, the circle of fifths. Now you may have seen this before. This is kind of a cliche, right? Like you've, you've made, if you've been in like a music classroom before, you've seen this thing called the circle of fifths on the wall and you're like, yeah, okay, that's neat. But I want to try to convince you here of the value of this thing, particularly if you are a songwriter. I'm gonna show you how to use this to get over any mental hurdle you have. In other words, writer's block. If you're stuck, if you're writing a song and you're stuck, go to the circle of fifths. It's a great place to be to give you a whole bunch of new ideas. So first, let's just talk about what this thing is. Uh, simply put, it is all of our keys laid out in a circle of fifth related uh, keys. In other words, a circle of fifths. Right, so we put C at the top, and if we go to the right, it's gonna be a fifth higher, so G, right? So if we count up, C, D, E, F, G, that's five. So that's a fifth higher. So then we're on G, if we count up five notes, we get to D, and here's the key of D, right? We count up five notes, we get to A, and this is the key of A, we get to E, and that's the key of E, counting up five notes around the circle. Now, let's look at, before we go any further, let's look at some of the, the kind of interesting things that pop up when we do this. What happens is, when we go to the right and we go around the circle, we always add one accidental, right? Zero accidentals, one sharp, two sharps, three sharps, four sharps that tells us something kind of interesting about how keys are laid out. If we're in the key of C, there are zero sharps. If we go to the key of G, there is only one sharp. That means that the key of G is kind of close to the key of C. There's only one note that's different. In C, you would have an F natural, and in C or in G, you would have an F sharp. So these two, uh, keys are closely related. We call them closely related keys is the actual term we use. Similarly, G and D are closely related keys. So you can go either direction in this and find a closely related key. Okay, now let's keep going. So we're on E, right? If we go up a fifth of E, we end on B, and that is the key signature for B. Now this particular drawing of the circle of fifths is showing us C flat because at some point, usually at the bottom here, we've got to switch over to flats, right? So typically the very bottom is where we do it. This one is doing it on C flat and it's gonna give us a C sharp down here too. So what that means is, let's jump to here for a minute. F sharp and 